Graphical models are a great tool to represent generative models. In other words, the process that we believe has created the data set we work with. We discuss in this video how this is done for classification and for regression and the models it leads to for the data distribution. In the case of classification, the graphical model um, we may use is this one with a multinomial variable C standing for the classes of the model and a variable X standing for the data point being drawn from this class. And on this edge, we have the conditional probability of getting that point X given the knowledge of its class C. As we did in, other, in the other examples on the graphical models, we can do a diagnostic inference um, going against the edge to reason about the probability of class C given the data point X. And as we did in previous examples, in this case, we apply Bayes' rule to get the following thing. The probability of C uh, given the data point X is by Bayes' rule, probability of X given C times P of C divided by uh, P of X. For a naive Bayes classifier, the idea was that the data points are independent of each other. And this can be represented with a graphical model in this way, where we have all of these data points, x1, x2, all the way to xd. And given, given the class C, uh, the idea that xj are independent of each other translates into having this probability of the whole vector of data points x, a given class C, being equal to the probability of the individual points multiplied with each other. A linear regression problem can also be visualized as a graphical model. We have the data point x prime, which is drawn from a prior distribution p of x, and the output of the model on this particular data point is r prime, which is calculated based on this data point x prime and also on a weight vector w. So this node has um, uh, edges from the node corresponding to w and from the node corresponding to x prime. The weight vector w may have its own prior distribution, um, which is parameterized by some parameter alpha. And remember that also when we did linear regression, we include the noise and the noise also influences the uh, output of the model. And the noise is um, uh, described with a prior distribution that depends on a parameter beta. And for example, this could be very well a normal distribution uh, with mean zero and um, variance, uh, for example, beta. So this allows uh, us to reason about the distribution of uh, this uh, output R prime <coughs> given the uh, data point X prime. The same goes also if we want to discuss the whole data set consisting of N data points. So in this case, we have N such data points, uh, X1, X2, all the way to Xn, and for each one of them, we have an output. We indicate with a um, bigger rectangle here that we have the whole data set uh, in, for, in, in our disposal. And, and when we calculate this output, again, this is influenced by W, and uh, this is also influenced by, uh, by uh, Epsilon. And <clears throat> we can express the whole problem of learning um, the optimal um, assignment for the, the, the vector w in such a way that the error on this data set is minimized and we can do it in the following way <clears throat> i can i can write that the probability so if we are given a, a data point I, I can say the probability for the uh, output on that data point r prime given the data point itself x prime but also given the whole data set x and um, r this is in fact equal to and remember what we did before um, so <clears throat> the whole point here is that we want to reason uh, about the probability of this output given the x prime and given also this data point and the idea was that we are going to reason about this going through this intermediate variable which is w and uh, we do that in the same way that we've done before, except that before these um, uh, intermediate variables were discrete, so we were including a sum uh, over all the variables that this, uh, all the values that this variable could take, um, except that in this case, in linear regression, this vector W has a continuous distribution rather than a discrete one. So instead of having a sum, 
we are going to have an integral, but the concept otherwise is exactly the same as before. So in other words, I'm doing exactly the same as before, except that instead of a sum, I'm including a, uh, an integral um, uh, on, on w, but otherwise the idea is the same. I'm, I'm including this um, intermediate variable w, and this goes like this. This is going to be the probability of r prime <coughs> given x prime given r given x and given also w and then <clears throat> this is multiplied with the probability of w given <clears throat> uh, x and r and this is an integral by by w and <clears throat> this is now equal to i have the integ integral in here and I'm just developing this probability here using the Bayes rule. So the first um, term is going to be exactly the same. It's going to be the probability of r prime given um, x prime. And as a matter of fact, when I'm calculating this, this value, I only need x prime and, and w, so that's enough. <clears throat> and then for the second term, um, I'm going to use the uh, uh, Bayes rule. And I'm going to get, this is equal to the probability of um, x and r given w times the probability of w divided by the probability of x and r. And remember, this was an integral by, by w. So now the point is that this term here can be taken out in front of the integral. It, it doesn't really depend on, on w. And we can even ignore it as we've done before in, on, on, in one of our uh, very early lectures on, on linear regression. So I'm just going to say that this is proportional to, in the sense that I'm, I'm just going to ignore this term I'm, I'm bringing back. So I'm bringing in front. So this is going to be proportional with the first term is going to be uh, kept exactly the same. Uh, so this is probability of r prime given x prime and w. <coughs> And here the point is that we have the probability of this whole data set um, given w, but this data set consists of n data points that are assumed to be independent of each other. And because of that, this, this um, uh, global probability, this, this joint probability is going to be equal to the product of the individual pro uh, probability. So this is now going to be a product by t from 1 to n. So this is for all the data points. And in here, we are going to have the probability of RT uh, given XT and W times the probability of W. And this is an integral again by, uh, by W. So you see, in this case, we are just obtaining again the same sort of um, formulation of the problem as we've done in um, our earlier lectures where we were following linear regression through the point of all of these uh, probability distributions of the um, variables of the problem.